Okay, so, um, now what we need to do is functions. So what are functions? Functions are basically a piece of code that's kind of like also the same in math. So basically you have some inputs and then it does something with it. So functions allows you to like, for example, repeat a bit of code a lot of times. So what could have a function is this. So we have two, we repeated this a lot of times and in programming, if you are copying and pasting something, it's probably not that good. So what we can do to make a function is kind of like var, but instead of var, we write function. So with function, let's just name it, say, say people, something like that. And then we can, so yeah, this is how you do it. Uh, you have two parentheses, and here is the inputs. And we're, what we're going to input, let's just call it people. So that's kind of like, so we don't need to declare that value. And actually, we can, yeah, we don't need to declare it. And this people doesn't actually mean this thing. It's just an input. So it's kind of like in mass f of x. x is just like the inputs to it. So what we can do is, like, we can just copy and paste what is here. And we can just do this. So, and now, instead of people, actually, we're not going to do people because it's for individual person, so person. And now we can, so it accepts an object. We, we can, like, give it an input, an object. So, what we can do is do this. Uh, yep, replace everything here with person. Person. All right, so now what we can do is with the function, we can just say call the function, kind of like in math also. So you say say people, and now we pass it input as one of the objects. We pass in, for example, this thing. And what we can do is we can pass in people. And then like before, we can pass in the zero as person. And then, and let's just pass it in again. All right, so that is a function. When you open it and reload, you can see we have the exact same thing. Um, and something I'm gonna do quickly is that these two people are not separated, and what we can do is we can, let's say, just console.log nothing. So if we do something like that, it basically just inserts a line in between, and it helps separate it again. And you'll notice that it also inserts a thing in the bottom. So basically, we're using the same code for both of them. So now, like when we need to edit something, we just need to edit it on one place. So for example, let's say, let's say if we change this to full name, and then I don't know, edit those things. Then it will say full name here and here. So yeah, that's how functions are useful. And yeah, they're extremely useful if you want to call the same code a lot of times in different places and you don't want to repeat it a lot of times. Now we have done functions, we're going to move on to if statements. So if statements basically are conditional, so only if something is true, you do this. So yeah, for example, what we want to do is instead of saying likes ice cream true, because that seems kind of like weird, people don't talk like that. and Let's say we want to do something like, if they like ice cream, uh, say you like ice cream, and if they don't, say you don't like ice cream. So what we can do is we can just delete this line and say if uh, parentheses, and inside is like the thing that determines if it is true or not. Kind of like the inputs of a function, but the if statement isn't really a function. So if, let's say, um, if person dot likes ice cream and now equals true so but instead of equals because equals doesn't work because uh, equals assigns the true value to here so what we need to do is add three equal signs two equal signs also work but I think it's better to add three uh, you can search up what's the difference between it but yeah three equal signs so this actually like compares it and returns a boolean value. So this will be true if if uh, likes ice cream is true. And actually, 
we don't need to do equals true because this is already a boolean we can just leave it like this so if this is true uh, do something and what we can do is console.log you like ice cream yay okay so that's how you do if statements another thing you can do is else so if that isn't true what do you do you can say console.log I don't know you are a horrible person yeah okay so now we reload you like ice cream you are a horrible person all right great so yeah that's how you do if statements and else another thing is that sometimes you have more than two different values so like if else um, it just doesn't really work for our scenario but let's say I can give an example later where I'm just gonna keep else here okay so let's say that if you want to do something else like if the name is over 18 you will say over 18 so if so how do we do something that compares over 18 because this is a number and it's not a boolean so we can't just if age we can't do that so what we do is if person the actually I'm, I should put this below here if parentheses and then person dot age greater greater than 18 so what we do here is that it's a comparison so it's just like the angle bracket is the same thing as in math so this if it is greater than then this will be true and now we can execute whatever code we want so console.log you are greater than 18 years old and we can also do here else if else if um, so if the first thing isn't true we can do if person dot age equals equals eighteen. So what does equal eighteen do? Uh, you do console dot log. We can say you are eighteen years old. So basically, what this does is if this isn't true, it will try to see if this is true. So if console dot log, yeah, if the person is not greater than eighteen, then it will see if they are eighteen years old, and it will say this. And if it's not, we can just change them together again and say, for example, um, else. This time we don't need an if because everything else will be under 18. So console.log, you are under 18 years old. So let's say, yep, you are under 18 years old or greater than 18 years old. That works perfectly fine. Um, let's say Joe becomes 18. It will say you are 18 years old. So yeah, this is this is conditional, and you can just use some like this. And let me just go over all the different like conditional operators I can think of. Okay, so first of all, I told you to use uh, three equals, and that just makes stuff better and more uh, convenient and less confusing but sometimes I'm lazy and I use two equals and this isn't the same so for example you have a string and the string is zero and if you do this then this thing will output true so let's just let's just console.log log that yeah we can console.log anything and beginning it will say true but if you do three equal signs um, it is it will be false so the difference between these is that this doesn't this try to convert the types and like doesn't care about the different types. So uh, the text zero and the number zero is the same to it. But if you do this, it would be different, and that is, I guess, what is preferred. Um, you can also do, for example, yeah, if zero equals zero, true and whatever. Um, if one is greater than zero, that would be true. If one is less than zero that would be false here and we can we can also have less than or equal to so for example if we have if zero is less than or equal to zero then that would be true so yeah there's a lot of different integers greater than or equal to 
and yeah that's basically a lot of the different things and also what we can do is yeah those are comparing okay so what if we want to do something like if they like ice cream and if they're younger than 18 we can say something so what we can do in that case is if let's say person dot age is less than let's say less than or equal to 18 and we can say how do you do like if something and something is true then it would be true we do to these of these like m percent then so person dot age less than 18 and person dot likes ice cream and now we can say you you are under 18 and like ice cream so now okay not allowed to okay that's some other error from somewhere else i think and but yeah it does nothing um so let's say we have to change bob's age to be under 18 and you are under 18 and you like ice cream so that shows up for bob so basically yeah that's how it works and you have or and that's how you do and you can also do or with these like two two of these um yeah slashes these look like forward slashes for some reason but i think that's just my font what they're supposed to be is that is um these oh um, yeah, these perfectly straight things. So that's like the backslash key. If you hold shift, you can get this. These are supposed to be uh, straight, but I have my font and it's italics. But yeah, this is or. So if you are under 18 or you like ice cream, and then we can like maybe to make it make more sense, we can do this. Or like ice cream. And yeah, those are if statements. Yay. Okay, so we went over for loops, we went, went over functions. And sorry if I'm explaining too long or repeating a lot of stuff, but I just want to try, I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. So now we do for loops. So let's say for loops and loops are basically, yeah, the word loop. So it's something you can repeat a piece of code or repeatedly do something a lot of times. So what we do is do this for let i equals zero so it creates a variable let is the same thing as var and we can it's not so var we can do var and we can do let so let what's the difference is like global and not global so let basically means that you can use the variable i in other places that it won't affect it it's only available inside the for loop so variable and less than i is less than let's say 10 if i is less than 10 i equals i plus 1 so we do this so basically what this code says is create a variable that's i and if i is less than 10 then add 1 to it every time you repeat so we actually have a more concise way of saying add 1 to it instead of equals i plus 1 and the way we do it is plus equals 1 we can also do plus equals 2 and in this case, if it's plus equals 1, we can actually simplify it even more to i++. Plus plus. And now we can do console.log, let's say, hello. And this will print hello 10 times here. Hello. Actually, it shows a number 10 because it collapses all of them, the browser does, but it's actually printing it 10 times as the number says here. Uh, we can also do, for example, instead of the text hello, we can also use the variable i here. So. What we do is 1 to 0, 0, 1 to 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as expected. So that's how loops work. And I guess if I see a place that we have repeated code sale, and that's a perfect place for where we can put a loop. So here, instead of doing save people twice, we can do, for example, uh, for, yeah, the same thing, let i equals 0. And how do we decide how many times we want to loop it? The way we decide is, uh, so easy way is to decide see how many uh, people are like how many people are in this people's array. So currently there are two. So we can do if 
i is less than 2. But if we want to change it, we'll have to change this number again and that's not good. So what we do is actually we can get the help how many like how many people are in this array by doing people dot length. And yeah, if it's less than the length, we keep going. And then i plus plus. So now we put this in the brackets. And what we do is yeah, say people and then instead of doing this. Uh, we delete one of them because it's looping a lot of times and replace this index by i. So basically it starts at zero and then it continues upwards. So the first time it loops around, this i is zero. So it prints the first person here. And yeah, it prints the first person here. And then the second time it loops around, i plus s equals one. And then it becomes one. And then it prints the second person. And then, because 1 will be less than the people dot 2, and if it tries to add another 1 and become 2, 2 will, be, 2 will not be less than the length of the people, so it stops there. So now, we have basically none repeating code except here. And, yeah, let's say we just want, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Let's say we have another person called Jack. Uh, I don't know what happens with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just doing something random here, but if we have a third person, it repeats it three times and prints all three of them. There are also a bunch of other ways to do loops. For example, another way is a for of loop. So for instead of let i, we do for person of people. So what this does is, and then we can do say people person. So this is another syntax that we can just comment this out by putting slashes in front or I did command slash which is a shortcut for doing that. Uh, now it does the same thing. So basically for person of people, so this only works if people is an array which in this case the variable is. So basically for each time it loops it, person becomes one of the elements of the array. So the first time it loops, person is this. And so we can just pass it in this uh, function and then it will do whatever the function does. And then the second time it passes in this thing, and then the third time it passes in that. And it, yeah, this is a simple way of doing it. And there is another thing that we can do is while loops. And so while loops are basically there is it's unclear where when you should use while loops instead of for loops, but let's say we have var i, we still need to we this time we need to declare a uh, outside and while basically is what it is is it kind of like a statement it accepts a boolean so while let's say i is less than people dot name um, and then we do say people people i and then so basically if i is less than then it will continue repeating until it is a less than and then we what we have to do is also add one here like this so yep and then this shows the same thing so this is a while loops and while loops um i wouldn't do this because you had to put something here and then put something here is pretty inconvenient but while loops are kind of more useful if at, you don't know at the beginning how many times you're going to loop and the situation kind of changes inside the loops for some reason. Um, it's hard to explain but sometimes you'll need it if you... Yeah, sometimes you'll need it. Um, yeah, those are four loops and the different types of loops. And now, um, we basically, you can see that we don't have any code that's repeated and that's pretty good and I think this code is like really good now. Uh, one thing that we can change is instead of copy and pasting, so we have to write name here, age here, likes ice cream here, and then we have to do this for every time we add a person. We can actually do something called constructors. So constructors basically build the objects for you. And the way we do that is the same, it looks exactly the same as a function. And so we write function, let's say create people or something like that. Uh, what we can do is this. So a uh, function, just like in math, can have multiple inputs. So let's say the first input is called name, comma, age, so likes, 
ice cream. So we don't have to name it exactly the same as this, but yeah, I just named it this. So basically, there's three inputs. You separate them by commas, and you can use three variables. So what we do is this keyword. So this is kind of like confusing, but so what I, I'm just going to do it and then yeah, this dot h equals h, this dot likes ice cream equals likes ice cream. So basically this is kind of like referring to itself, like the function itself, I'm pretty sure. But so basically this is how you make an object kind of so this dot is kind of like create people dot name, but not really. Um, it kind of is, but not really. Um, I mean, yeah, it is, but yeah. So basically, this dot name is called equals name. Also, by the way, you don't need to name it the exact same thing, but I just did because it's simpler to remember the variable. So now what we need to do is we can change this syntax a tiny bit. So instead of doing this, we can actually say, I'm pretty sure, new create people. Actually, what we can do, I think it would be best if we actually, instead of doing create people, we just name people with a capital P. So that would distinguish both of them, and with these constructors, they're often use, using a capital. So new people. And so we can just pass in the thing, show. Actually, what was this? Yeah, the first person was Bob. The age, I forgot, it's 30, I think. And likes ice cream is true. So now I'm just going to delete two of these and so instead of doing like so uh, create an object, we can do this actually. So new create people Joe 2014 uh, boss. And I'm not going to do um, who is a Jack because I'm lazy and no one cares about Jack. Uh, yeah, now it does exactly the same thing as before, as expected. And now we basically make the syntax uh, Easier and with this constructor, we can do it like this. Actually, most of the time, you probably won't need a constructor for something this simple, and we can do the same previously. But late, if you have a lot of different stuff, uh, you can just do inputs without saying like name or whatever. So, yeah, this is just an easy way of doing that. Um, I think this concludes our video for number three. Um, next. Next time, I will probably post a video on Sunday, and we can do um, classes. Classes are kind of like objects, but uh, how, do, how should I describe it? More advanced, I guess. But yeah, classes. Next time, we'll do classes and all of those stuff. And I hope you enjoyed the video.